Rupeg needs a dinghy and we are literally halfway there. This is the good half of an inflatable aluminium hard bottom boat. So we ripped all of the um, tubes off, the rubber's given way, and these, this is a, a deep V aluminium hard bottom. So what we're gonna do is uh, get some tube rolled up, um, 400 millimeter tube rolled up, and then we're gonna start welding in um, aluminium pontoons all the way around. So we're gonna have a really hardy expedition boat. So this is the first step in our uh, aluminium jet boat conversion. So there's a lot of paint and a lot of flaky paint on this. We need to rip it all off. So Joe's going through and blasting all of the, um, the two-pack white paint off. We're going to leave it as an aluminium finish. Um, we don't need to paint it. It's going to be an expedition boat. It's going to get knocked around. So it's straight aluminium. It means it's easy maintenance-wise. So realisation time, 
Um, we've been trying to sandblast this paint off and we realized we had exactly the same problem when we did our uh, engine door. There's a link in the um, corner here for the video about that. What we found is when we were trying to get the white two pack off the aluminium, it was really difficult with the sandblaster and we went through a huge amount of sand. Um, so the fastest way we found was using paint stripper, took off maybe 95% of the paint and then take the rest off with sand and you save a huge amount of labor actually creating that sand in the first place. So the plan this morning is um, to go over the dinghy with paint stripper. We've got it in that yellow tin behind me there. So we're gonna go through, um, douse that on, leave it for an hour or two, and then we'll probably scrape and or sandblast um, the remainder off. What we're gonna do is keep the rubber um, non-slip stuff that's already mounted onto the boat. Um, so rather than like try and rip that off and re-glue it or anything like that, it's held on really well. So what we're gonna do is sandblast around the edge because sand will bounce off anything rubber so you don't, it doesn't really damage the rubber at all. Um, so I'm going to paint strip maybe say half an inch away from that um, rubber edge because paint stripper and rubber don't mix um, and then yeah I'll be able to clean it up with the sandblaster so we get a really beautiful edge. So this here last up really well, that's the old dirty stuff. This is what you fastened yesterday. Yeah. Oh, it's going to come up gorgeous. It? It's quite white isn't it? Yeah. Like it's a grainy white. It's lovely. You must be really excited. Oh yeah. I realise I'm going to have to do quite a bit of redesign back here. What do you mean? Because uh, of the jet unit. Oh yeah. I'm going to have to modify quite a bit of this. Talking to Clint, um, yeah he reckons go with a three cylinder 110 horsepower. Yeah, my feeling is that that's the right one, yeah. 110. It's pretty that's powerful. Right power. Yeah, but right. we'll need it for a whole and group egg out of our situation. Yeah. I think it's good to have that. Um, you know, in the background. Yeah, in yeah. The backup, you know. It's it easy also to means that you're not working the engine so hard, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. It's easy to use half throttle, and it's hard to use 150 percent throttle. <laughs> yeah. If you're ever using paint stripper, pile it on. Don't be shy. It doesn't work if you put it on too thin. You have to do multiple coats then. Whereas if you put it a really thick coat like quarter inch thick sometimes. It works brilliantly. I think we're done. It's yep. starting to work, is it? Yeah, so have a look down here. That's what it comes up like. Fast, eh? Yeah, yeah, so it'll, it'll rip it off to, like it'll bubble up. So where, where that's bubbling was a thick ridge of paint, and you see down here where it's thin, and it's not really bubbling. So it's too thin, basically, the layer that I put on. Why don't you throw some more on? I got it, yeah. Yeah, you've got a good coat at the back here, it's starting to strip off already. Yeah. So you want to just, yeah, use heaps. It's so much faster in the long run. You give it two hours normally, don't you, Eddie? Uh, it depends on the brand, I think. But yeah, this one, I think, is about an hour or something like that. But it kind of doesn't matter. Like, once it's at that bubbly stage, you can scrape it off. So you know when it's done. Yeah, yeah. So where you've got this stuff that's bubbling off, like it's just a normal old sort of wallpaper scraper. The paint comes off piece of cake. And you're left with whatever the finish is underneath. Yeah, look at that. So that's just bare alloy. Yeah, it needs a good clean up, eh? It's probably slightly discoloured because of the paint stripper, mm, but mm. that doesn't matter. But the longer you leave it, the better it is. Like you can see this big wallop of paint stripper here. It's already taken the paint off underneath, but that'll that'll just rip that paint apart basically. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You need to put more on in the flat areas, or? Um, I'm happy with that because I I'll... remember the last time the flat sort of um yeah, that's a good point. surfaces they they took forever. Yeah. Good point. Until you finally poured it on, and it was fine. Take your own advice, Damien. <laughs> Can you tell me what it's like for you to have been given this and like have like the one of your dream, <laughs> you know, sort of inventions yeah. really uh, starting to happen? What's it like? A bit surreal. Yeah. Like, um, so if I'm really frank and honest, I didn't think we'd have a great dinghy. I thought we'd be pushing as hard as we could to get brew peg in the water, and the dinghy would be a compromise, you know. 
Yeah. Like, because the money is needed for brew pig, not, not a dinghy. Um, and I, it's a bit like a bit of a daze. Like, I, the, the neighbours said that they're going to throw it out because it's not worth repairing for them. They said it's a great dinghy, but it's it's not worth repairing. And I said, but they just bought a different one, eh? Yeah, they bought a full hard bottom boat, not an inflatable. Um, and I thought, this is just phenomenal. So, yeah, I grabbed it. Um, and the, the cool part is, is that, like, like it's it's possible because of because of brew pig. Like it's possible because we've got all the gear to be able to build it. Only because of brew pig, you know. Like I wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. And like, John. And John, yeah. John's dropping off his aluminium welder. Like I don't have an aluminium welder, and and he's bringing that up and leaving it with us. Um, which it's is, a, Dame's got to learn aluminium yeah. welding. It's a, it's another sort of animal than yeah steel welding Different, and yeah. stainless and yeah. So, so it's, it's a learning big learning curve. Yeah, like. I mean, 110 horsepower, and this is kind of like putting a jet unit on a Honda Civic. Um, oh, so what's what's actually necessary then? Well, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Right, so you have to talk to Clint about that a bit more. There's a lot of guesswork involved in this. Right. Oh. But the flip side is, it's, like I said earlier, it's easier to use 50% throttle than it is to use 150% throttle. So mm. it's easier to get a more powerful engine and just back off a bit. Yeah, the only problem is with it really being really powerful is that I can see you'll do wheelies. So no. to avoid that, we probably need to underpower a little. Uh, I'm sorry, avoid that? Avoid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. It is. <laughs> Thank you, uh, kind neighbours, who were here only briefly and yeah. delivered us our dream boat. It's amazing. Amazing. First thing in the morning, um, and there's a reason why we're getting up so early, it's to put the paint stripper on this dinghy. I made a mistake yesterday, um, and the paint stripper didn't really work, so I want to show you what I'm doing. So we've uh, gone through and done one layer of paint stripper, but you can see it hasn't really taken a lot of the paint off, and it's because I forgot a really important thing. Um, this stuff. The longer it's on, the better it works, and it works by evaporation. So once it's evaporated, it obviously stops working. We put it on, and it ended up being in the hot sun um, pretty, I don't know, a few minutes afterwards, and basically just dried out really fast. Um, currently, there's a heat wave going on in Aussie, and um, like it's not mega hot for us. It's probably mid 30s um, Celsius, and uh, in inland parts of Aussie, they're getting up as high as sort of 50 degrees Celsius, um, with a lot of metro at roughly 40, 45. Um, so it's really, really stinking hot over here at the moment. So yeah, the sun's not even up, and you sort of see it's starting to come up and getting light. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're getting up first thing in the morning so that we can um, put the paint stripper on. We're going to um, get it, we're doing it while it's as cold as we can get it, and then we're going to wrap it up so that it's in the shade, and we're also going to wrap it so that the, um, the gas and, and the chemicals and stuff in this paint stripper actually sort of gets stuck in that little cocoon and stay you know, working on the aluminium longer, basically. Walls are listening when we talk Making echoes as we walk There's no one left but you and me It's like a made-up place that only we can see Hold my hand and hear the words I say Close your eyes Right, so now that we've wrapped it up, um, we're basically going to leave that for a couple of hours. Um, it's in the, it's underneath the boat at the front, which is the shadiest part of the boat. Um, it's, I don't know, five o'clock in the morning, something like that now. Um, and uh, yeah, there probably won't be sun on that until maybe nine-ish, something like that. So it's got a good couple of hours of being in the shade. It's still going to get warm because it's Australia, everything gets warm. Um, but what we've sort of done, we've obviously tarped it up so that we can give it the most amount of um, ability to keep the gases inside that sort of cocoon um, and uh, yeah that'll that'll basically make the paint stripper work more effective than normal um, the hope is we've put it on really thick the hope is it's going to bubble off say 90 percent of that paint um, and then we can get in today and start sandblasting it and we'll rip all of that back to aluminium um, so in some areas it's working beautifully you can sort of see you see the darker color of that aluminium that's where the paint stripper is and it's it's basically ripping up that paint really well however over on the other side there's only a couple of spots that it's actually doing anything that one and that one and the rest is 
pretty much not even blinking. That's water blasting, is it? Right. That's water blasting and that's sand blasting. Mm, well, it looks different. See the difference? Mm. So, I've tried to get off much of the loose stuff if I can. Yeah, it's taken a while. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to paint on the end. tried a few different things on the dinghy now um, we're finding the paint stripper is pretty gutless um, we've tried paint stripping and then sandblasting we've tried sandblasting on its own um, this paint is really not wanting to come off so we're wondering if uh, potentially it's the paint stripper just not being a decent enough um, chemical or whatever you know the active ingredient is so we're gonna have a last go with what we've got left and then we'll probably nip into town and grab something that's got a bit more grunt Bex and Joe came and visited over the weekend. Bex helped me with a bit of sewing, and the guys donated a television to Brewpeg. Thanks, guys. So Bex is trying to get a USB port plugged in for a keyboard and mouse. I guess like a foot and a half behind the TV. She got it. <laughs> is it in? Yes. Is it going in? Yeah, it's with the internet. Yeah, it's got Wi-Fi. Turns out. So cool. Yeah. One of the interior jobs Damien needs to do is insulating the starboard bedroom walls. The two bunks have finished, Tim's finished the top bunk. We're going to be insulating on either side of the ribs, it's 50mm and uh, yeah, we'll get on to that this weekend.
and an adjustment stick. So that's starting to partially insulate out that room. So that's a 60 mil covering uh, of insulation. That's polystyrene that we're using. Uh, what we're gonna do, you see that gap between the two where there's a blue or a dark gray line, sorry. Um, that's gonna have wood glued to it. And then that's what our uh, wall panel is gonna be fastened to. So it's about a 10 mil strip of, or what's that, 3 8 an Imperial. So yeah, roughly 10 mil um, of wood. So as a move of the boat, we had to um, move all our work area, so we're putting it back now. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, Jess is sweeping a gravel workyard. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's because of... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shit that you see on the internet, you're like, they didn't just do that, did they? <laughs> There's lots of shards down here, I need to get rid of them for the dog. <laughs> She doesn't want the gravel to be untidy. <laughs> <laughs> what if the neighbours see my gravel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, the front of my mind, fore and centre. <laughs> I'm doing because I feel really embarrassed. <laughs> You'll know, actually probably believe him. Look, I hope you can see that. Look at all that metal. I can't leave that around for the dog. Yeah. <laughs> 
Must be coming up for his time to go for a walk with it. It is walk his time. Oh, sweetheart, we're almost there. Getting the big bits done. Yeah, I heard it, buddy. Oh, little gato. All right, babe, you ready for a run? So we've got heaps of work coming up. Um, we've got the rudder to install, all of the bearings, new shaft, everything like that. So we needed to create a space that we can work. So as you can see, I've sort of got a little bit of floor space here, but I do have my metal bench back. So um, I've been missing this thing for months now. Um, but what we've got, so basically it's a decent solid bench. For those that haven't seen this thing before, it's a solid one inch thick steel bench. Um, and then I've got some form ply on the ground just so that we've got a decent surface to work on. And then plenty of space uh, to get in and out of here. So job's coming up. We're gonna be sorting this rudder out. Um, there's the rudder on the ground. We've got to uh, ream this um, bush out at the end. Oh, get out of the light. We've got to ream this bush out at the end here and we're gonna fit a new um, a new bearing into that new bush. We also need to uh, cut this pin off. We're gonna be installing a new pin and complete with grease. And then I just need to give this um, shaft a clean out. We've got new bearings machined up. John's got those ready and we're going to install those and then ream them to the, the final ID that we need once they're in. Um, over the back, we've got all of our oil, so there's a couple of tonnes of diesel and oil, um, well, I think three and a half tonnes all up. We've got to put it through this processor unit here, um, so that's coming up soon to get that finally sorted. Uh, what else are we doing? And then we are sorting out stabilisers which go halfway down the hull. The water's boiling just coming out of the cold tap. We try to cool the dog down and we're going to melt them. It's getting much better, but it's still not quite enough, is it, in these hot days? Whoa, that's still hot. Oh, I think it's a little bit cold. <laughs> All the pipes must be hot, not just that one. Oh, messy, I don't know, darling. Oh, there we go. Okay. They're right, they're right. It's a little bit warm. You'll get wind chill because it's right underneath the yeah, aircon. So good, isn't it? Even if it's warm, it should be right. That's a bit better. Okay. We just cut it always known. So good for you though. Gives you an idea of how big the sinks are. <laughs> you Perfect can, mush, mushy size. You can fit one standard sized <laughs> dog in there. Right. You ready? Okay, this can be. Good boy. Gotta say, I am loving having my orange tent back. All right, so this afternoon's job, I need to chop off this uh, pin tool. Um, let me show you what I've got to do. This is in preparation for John arriving so that we can start aligning the rudder. So this bush here has to be cut off. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you come right down, you can see all the way around the base there is a weld that just holds it on. Um, I'm hoping that it's just that weld that holds it on and they haven't like lanced it and then put it through and it's an interference fit or anything like that. I'm hoping it's basically just cut that weld and the whole thing will come off. We'll get into it and we'll find out how they put this thing together.
think I've cut enough to get it off yet, oh. but we'll see how we go. Loud? Loud. Put my earplugs on. I've got earplugs. I'm going to get them. And the hopes of not getting deaf. Just hit something. One lump of stainless. Wonderful. Can I look at the bottom of it? Yeah. So this is a piece of stainless with within a piece they've basically welded it on. You can see all the way around that mark, all the way around like a weld. And they've machined it down. You can see the circles where they've machined it in the in the lathe. And then they basically just um yeah, welded it on just like I thought they did. So paperweight? Yeah, it's a great paperweight for like a ream of paper. It's for you, John. It's off. <laughs> Clean up the where it's gonna, the new one's gonna weld to. And that's that job finished. This is what we used to do all of our sandblasting. So in here we um, get this river sand and then that's what we dry and sieve and use for the blasting and it leaves a fine finish on the sandblasting surface. So, um, so we're heading home to be scorched by the hot sun <laughs> and put this in the little trailer that we have. We're discussing what this is. I'm sorry if that's too fast to see, but we think it's zucchini. <laughs> I just realised. <laughs> Look at the green blur. Look, tell me what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, a busy couple of weeks coming up. We've yeah. had the delay of the, um, the freight company. It pretty much stopped us for two weeks. And poor John. Yeah. Yeah. John and Paula, John's partner, they, they were ringing them at their end in Melbourne and we were ringing them here and it took, I don't know how many. Calls. It must have been yeah. like 20, 30, calls. 20, 30 yeah. calls. Yeah, so anyway, so but we got it to John. John and Paula were amazing. Um, Paula surprised me with a, um, a seeker build, build wrap. <laughs> the cutest thing ever, and the dog wants to eat it. Yeah. So I'm defending it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's in high places at the moment. If I leave it anywhere close, he's going to get it. Part of Creature Comforts, these are the dogs that I made um, a while ago. This is the, it's a bit hard to see in the light, but this is the door, one of the lounge room doors. I've pulled it off and um, this is the basic dog that's been sort of keeping the boat locked for the last I don't know, year or something like that. What I need to do is make this double acting. So at the moment there's no handle on the underside of the door. So if you see down there, it's just a basically a blank door. So today we're going to take this off, take the bolt that I welded onto this frame off drill a hole all the way through and weld in a stainless um, piece of tube and then we're going to make a double acting dog.
plan is um, to basically, with the slot that I've cut in here, you can sort of see I've hole sawed all the way through, top's opened right up, and it goes through to the other side. I'm gonna weld the stainless um, pipe that I've cut, I'm gonna weld that in now, um, and I'll seal it all the way around so that there's no way that there's gonna be any air leaks into the steel, because on the inside of here, um, there's no paint or anything like that, so it will rust, and that's okay so long as that's a fully sealed, um, basically, pocket of air in there and new oxygen can't get in. Um, I just need to keep that fully sealed up. So let's get in and we'll weld this uh, stainless pipe into there now. So the plan is to duplicate the shape that we've just cut on this bolt. We want to basically duplicate it with this uh, bolt that we've got here. So. So, so it is tight, it's not a perfect fit, but that's really okay. Alright, let that sit. Sweet. Alright. So the door's got a dog on it so that we can unlock it from the outside as well as the inside. Um, this is something that we haven't had on Brewpeak for about a year, so uh, it's pretty neat to be able to <laughs> lock the boat up and make sure it's shut from the outside. So um, we'll get those mounted upstairs now. We'll just let the, uh, the Loctite dry on that nut and then we'll get them mounted upstairs. And that should be us for today. What are you doing?
Oh. Are you chasing your tail? Oh, this old time just put it all behind. Remember you. Always find somewhere to hide when we were kids so we could see and hear the water run. River's gonna cry when you're gone.